take the NPM, Deputy Inspector General Police, and other members of the Force Management Team that are here, various senior officers, gentlemen of the press, and ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Inspector General Police, I want to warmly welcome you to this media briefing tonight. I'm sure this, I was called at distance of the Inspector General Police to give us updates uh, and, of course, review of what we experienced today across the length and breadth of this country concerning the nationwide protest. On that note, I want to invite the Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to please address this noble gallery tonight. The RGP, we are all ready for you, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen of the press, it is with grave sense of responsibility that I address you this evening. You will recall that upon several indications by various groups of their intent to commence a nationwide protest on 1st August 2024, we rolled out several warnings based on actionable intelligence at our disposal, indicating that some groups were mobilizing for violent protest, while some groups claiming to be mobilizing for peaceful protest were doing so with violent undertones, refusing to cooperate with the police on measures to be taken to guarantee peaceful protest. On the basis of this intelligence, the police advised that the protest should be shelved at this instant. Where the organizers insisted on going on with the protest, they were advised to stage the protest in confined locations. This will have enabled the police to provide adequate protection for the pro protesters and isolate the criminals whose intention was to loot and destroy in the name of a protest. This we were doing in furtherance of our duty to protect lives and property and maintain law and order. While we affirm the constitutional rights of citizens to assemble and express their views on issues of national importance, we were wary about the dangers posed by agitation instigated by some individuals who have shown tendencies to be disloyal to the government of the day. Despite our suspicions, we showed good faith through professional conduct by providing security at strategic locations, all aimed at ensuring peaceful conduct during the protest, as the promoters pledged. Our men, deployed nationwide, went out with a clear brief to ensure that no one is unnecessarily harassed or intimidated. In places where there were court orders, we gave instructions for observance of same. Regrettably, events in some major cities today show that what was being instigated was mass uprising and looting, not protest. Those who were in the forefront of promoting the idea of the protest were not around to lead it. Hoodlums have been let loose on innocent Nigerians and their hard-earned businesses and property looted and destroyed. The motive of the rioters was basically two. Loot and destroy both private and government property. The destruction so far has been mind-boggling. There has been destruction in Kano, Borno, Yobe, Kaduna, Gombe, Bauchi, FCT Abuja, Naida, and Jigawa. Police stations have been destroyed. There have been attempts to take over government houses, looting of government infrastructures. Several warehouses and shops so far have been looted and in several instances completely destroyed. In spite of the refusal of the protesters, for instance in FCT to adhere to a court order, requesting that protests in Abuja should be at the national stadium, they trooped into the streets, and yet the police provided security for them. At no point did we breach their fundamental, fundamental rights, even as they breached court orders. In places like FCT, Kaduna, Kano, and Gombe, among others, we recorded incidents of unprovoked attacks on our security personnel, where one policeman has been reported murdered and others seriously injured. We alerted earlier that terror elements may take advantage of the protest to infiltrate the crowd of protesters with suicide bombers. Yesterday in Lagos, our EOD team was informed of a suspected IED on Bakatoni Way, Ikeja. The team responded swiftly and rendered safe what turned out to be an improvised explosive device, IED. Today in Boronu State, we recorded another incident of explosion, which occurred in the crowd of protesters, killing four instantly and severely injuring 34 others, many of whom are presently on danger list. We wish to advise law-abiding citizens of Nigeria to heed and not dismiss warnings given by the police and other security agencies, which were based on credible and actionable security intelligence. In the light of the current situation, the Nigerian police force has placed all units on red alert. Our officers are fully mobilized and prepared to respond swiftly and decisively to any further threats to public safety and order. We remain committed and resolute to protecting lives and property and ensuring that law 
law and order are maintained across the nation. Groups who are hiding under the guise of exercise of a right provided in the Constitution to destabilize the country should also remember that the same Constitution imposes on them the duty to obey the laws of the land and respect the rights of other citizens. The police is equipped to respond appropriately to the unfolding situations and will get assistance from other security agencies, including the military, if the need arises. We appeal to all citizens to remain calm and cooperate with the police and other security agencies during this challenging period. Your safety is our top priority, and we will continue to take all necessary measures to ensure continued peace and stability in our country. Thank you. Thank you, the Inspector General of Police. The messages were clear enough. The IGP, sir, if I have the permission of the IGP, it is question time. Uh, a gentleman of the press, if you have any clarification or intervention, the IGP is ready for you. Lucky channels. IGP, sir, good evening, sir. My name is Lucky Issa I work for Channels Television. In view of what has happened, would you be extending invitation to the organizers of this protest, those especially who have written to you and who you have invited before now? Thank you, Lucky Channels. Ada Bissam on Good evening, sir. My name is Ada Bissam on I report for Africa Independent Television, AIT. <laughs> IGP, sir, I'd like to know what word of caution you have for those who have turned the protest into our activity today. And I'm also curious to know why you and your team of management staff are wearing this red band on your arm. Thank you, sir. And, uh, <laughs> Ferdinand, Arise TV. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. But just to <coughs> circle back on the um, issues concerning the court's order yesterday, where one of the complaints from uh, you know, some of the protesters was about that they were not served any uh, court's judgment from yesterday. Just can you shed more uh, light on that particular situation, the court order and the efforts that were made to indeed uh, serve on these parties? Thank you. Francis from NTA. Good evening, Mr. IGP. Good evening, uh, the force management team. Francis Pong from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Uh, this morning, when I was coming to work, I was also attacked at uh, the Abacha barracks. And I have a question for you, Mr. IGP, sir. Uh, some of the protesters have alleged that it was because you know, some of the operatives, so to say, or officers, opened fire on them thereby necessitating the action. I'd like to hear from you, sir. The okay. action. Thank you. Uh, um, first, yeah, look. Let, sir. Let, let me take that question again from Lucky. Francis. Uh, Francis. The card question. OK, Mr. IGP, sir. Some of the protesters that we've had cause to interview, sir, uh, some of your men allegedly attacked them. That was why they reacted in that okay. order. At Nyanya Maraba Access. Good evening, IGP, senior management. My name is Sifon Nisim from TBC News. Um, just like my colleague just mentioned, um, on the outskirts of Abuja today, we also came under attack covering this incident. And there is an observation where the demonstrators. Um, there's an impression we, we have, or have observed the ongoings. There's this, uh, there seems to be the fact that police in that location were overwhelmed by the sheer size of the demonstrators. Uh, what are you doing differently? Thank you. Then, Francis, you said you were attacked. You didn't indicate those who attacked you. You, you ought to have a specific. Protesters. Okay. Maraba Yanazis. Thank you. Any other one? I think they, we are done with question time, the IGP. The IGP may wish to react to some of these issues. Thank you, sir. 
Okay, the first question was whether I would still be extending invitation to different groups who still want to stage protest. I want to believe that they have started the protest today. My invitation to the public, to those who intend to stage protest, is in the public and is still valid. So I'm not going to reissue that invitation. Then um, the lady from AIT wants to know what are my words of caution to the protesters. I want to caution that those who want to come out to protest must remain peaceful. Otherwise, they will not have a, will not have a choice than to respond to their acts. Like what we have today, we had incidents of looting and destruction of private businesses. We are not going to tolerate that anymore. We had incidents where there were unprovoked attacks on policemen and other security agents. We are not going to accept that. So if I advise that they should just not bother to continue with this. When we talk about rights to protest, we are not denied the rights. We have said severally that we recognize the rights of citizens to protest. But this right is also not absolute right. The same constitution that gave them rights to protest also imposed duties on them. What our lawyers have been telling our youth is that it's their right, it's their right. Nobody is talking to the youth about their duties and responsibilities to the state. And that's the problem. These people should be educated. They should know that there are duties and responsibilities expected of them to the state. They only want to enjoy this, the, the rights and neglecting the, the duties. Those people who are claiming rights of protest, they should know that they have a duty to the nation to respect the rights of other citizens, to obey the law of the land. There is also a duty to be loyal to the state, to be patriotic. It's a constitutional responsibility of a citizen of Nigeria. Nobody is talking about all those duties and responsibilities. All we are talking about is rights, rights, and rights. Yes, it's good to know your rights, but it's not good to take the rights and neglect the, the, the duties. The two come together. Then um, why are we on red bound? If you listen to my address, I said that um, all our commands and units have been put on red alert. So the red bound we are wearing signifies it's a symbol. Once you see us on red, just know that our commands are on red alert. OK, there is this other one that said that um, the group who did not obey the court order claimed that they were not served. How do you serve faceless people? People that you don't know. How do you serve them with the others? They remain faceless. So it will be difficult to serve them. Their threats were in social media. I think the other two was on social media. So I believe they have been served. The Channel's reporter reported an attack on himself by protesters. TVC. Francis, was it not Francis? Francis is NTN. Okay. Francis said that he was also attacked while going to work. Francis is not a policeman. I don't know how he got attacked. So it shows that the intention of these so-called protesters are not genuine. Otherwise, why do you attack a, 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 a reporter who is not in uniform? Then they claim that um, the police, first of all, attacked them and they responded. It's false. <clears throat> if you say that, um, if you believe their claim that the police were attacked, them, the police attacked them before they attacked the police, I will ask you, you're also a victim of the attack. What, did you also attack them before they attacked you? You didn't attack them and they attacked you. So the police didn't attack them. They attacked the police without provocation. And I have said we are not going to allow that. We are not going to